Hey there, everyone. Michael Lee Bryan here from the Oraculous School of Astrology with yet another question and answer segment where practicing astrologers bring me their questions and I provide them answers based on my astrological practice. If you're enjoying these Q&A segments and you'd like to work with either myself or an OSA certified astrologer, then by all means check out our website where you can book yourself a high quality astrological consultation today. Also, I answer many of these questions and more in my book, Mastering Traditional Astrology, A Depth of Beginning in the Celestial Art, which you can buy a copy of on Amazon.com. Um, I, I have to agree with everything. very generous of you to allow us to be here, even though we're not in your class. So thank you. Um, as well. I do kind of hope that your continued exposure to, to very, <laughs> to very world-class astrology will possibly make you say, Hey, I should probably go and study with this guy. So it's probably not completely all altruistic. However, <laughs> okay, good. Just, 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 <laughs> Good. Just letting you know, there's a little bit of a hidden agenda here. I would definitely love for all 20 of you to come and study at the Oraculo School of Astrology, hands down. You deserve, you deserve. You're a great teacher. How would you interpret the ruler of the ascendant being retrograde in the natal chart? And as an addendum to that, would you see that more displayed by what it rules so like for example if it rules the first and the fourth or by where it is or both the question has to do with in general the question is how do we interpret a retrograde ruler of the ascendant period and then we have a specific example of that based on a particular chart Abraham Ibn Ezra tells us that retrogradation is one of the worst things that can happen to a planet, rivaled only by combustion, meaning the planet is too close to the sun, as well as cadency. So these three things, according to Abraham Ibn Ezra, are above and beyond bad as far as the planets are concerned. Now, we have to take that into some level of context because things that are bad in general may not necessarily be bad when we bring them down to the realities of our specific chart. And many of you know that I'm a huge proponent of this idea that if something is bad in a general astrological context, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bad within the context of your specific life, because all of us have our entire lives with which to work out the good things, the bad things, and everything in the middle within the context of our natal astrological horoscope. So from a horary perspective, Jupiter at two degrees Capricorn retrograde in the second house is probably a very challenging thing. It is a very challenging thing, especially if that Jupiter is ruling the ascendant. However, from a natal perspective, it's probably not going to be the worst thing in the world. It still bears its challenges, but it's not necessarily going to be the worst thing in the world. Retrogradation basically means that the vital energy that we associate with a planet is moving in the wrong direction. So it's as if the goal of that planet is in the front of it, but because of the retrogradation, it's moving inward. It's a very internalized state that doesn't really give that planet much external agency to really express itself in a very large or robust way within the overarching life of that person. So that's the retrograde piece. Now, when we have a planet that is retrograde from a natal perspective, particularly the rule of the ascendant, that's one of the things that can be challenging from a medical astrology perspective in terms of how much vitality and how much vital life that person has with which to navigate their lives within this lifetime. So that's can one. Confirm. Tell me. Can confirm. Yes. Can confirm. Okay, there you go. So that's one of the things that we find within the notion of the retrograde ruler of the ascendant. It's a very, it can be a very challenging thing as far as a person's physical health is concerned. And this is one of the things that I will teach within our larger medical astrology diploma program, because there are certain things that we can look at within a chart that specifically give us an indication of what might be occurring within the overall constitution of that person's life. And 
I've shared some of those things today. For example, the nodes in the sixth and the twelfth house is one such thing. The retrograde rule of the ascendant is another such thing. But it's important not to just have this grab bag of individual concepts. We want to be able to bring all of those things together in a very potent I keep on using the word diagnostic, which is the incorrect word to use because diagnosis is completely beyond the scope of an astrologer's practice. But it puts together a very comprehensive assessment methodology that many people don't have within the context of their own astrological practice. And I would love to share that with people within the context of our medical astrology training, because these are some things that we just should know. You don't have to be a medical doctor in order to look at the chart and know when a person's chart is set up for a great amount of vitality and health within this lifetime, or when that person's chart is set up to have a more challenging time in terms of vitality and health. And the retrograde rule of the ascendant is one of the things that we look for. Another one of the things that we look for is when a person is having the ruler of the ascendant in either its detriment or its fall. Now, we know that Jupiter in Capricorn is in the sign of its fall within the context of that sign. Jupiter is in fall at the 15th degree of Capricorn specifically, but in general, Jupiter is in fall in that entire sign. So Jupiter in Capricorn isn't having the best time in the world at all in general, and no planet in the sign of its fall is having a very good time in the world in general, because to be in the sign of your fall is to be in the state of debilitation. When we have the rule of the ascendant as Jupiter in the sign of its fallen Capricorn, that can oftentimes be a person who feels as if very early on in life they were left to the curb and they had to figure out how to grow up themselves and they also had to figure out how to make their own way in the world themselves because they probably don't feel as if they have a fundamental level of care or nurture that exists within their basic environment that allows them to tap into the same streams of abundance as other people around them. So that's one of the things that we see when a person is having Jupiter in Capricorn ruling their ascendant with Sagittarius on the cusp of the ascendant. It can feel like a definite sense of, if not direct impoverishment, it can feel like a definite sense of lack and having to navigate the world with less resources than other people around them. So that's the second thing that we see with Jupiter in Capricorn retrograde. Now let's bring it to the second house. When we have any planet in the sign of its fall, whether that is Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, or the Moon, any planet that is essentially debilitated is a malefic for the entire world. It's a malefic in general. So Jupiter, though the greater benefic in general, if Jupiter or any of the other seven classical planets is in the sign of its detriment or the sign of its fall, then that planet is, at the moment, a malefic planet. So having Jupiter in Capricorn retrograde in the second house is having a malefic influence on the affairs of the second house. And once again, I haven't seen the chart in its entirety, but one of the things that that can mean is that there are very real financial challenges within the lifetime of this native. And that can either be challenges because of how the native herself could be spending money within the world or her own relationship to money. Or maybe she feels as if she didn't necessarily have the clearest understanding of how to navigate the world as a financial being. And that probably set her up for her fair share of financial challenges and her fair share of karmic stories in this lifetime surrounding the topic of financial difficulty. When we have Jupiter within the second house in general, we would love to love that Jupiter in the second house, but if that Jupiter is in the second house in Capricorn retrograde, then it can set a person up for a life of overspending or for living financially beyond their means or not even having the financial means to even consider living financially beyond those means because it sets that person up to feel relatively hard done by the world as far as the specific topic of finances is concerned. Now, when we move and we take a look at the other house that this Jupiter is ruling, and even before we say that, 
everything will be augmented based on how afflicted these planets are versus how supported these planets are. If that Jupiter is there and also receiving other hard aspects from other planets, then it stands to reason that that's going to create a very challenging life for this native within this lifetime in terms of her financial story in general. This particular Jupiter in this particular chart can also have issues as far as food is concerned. And the reason why I say that is because the second house, even though a lot of people don't know this, the second house is also a house of food. And so there could be dietary complications surrounding food and how this person is bringing food into the body, processing food, releasing food from the body. The entire process of digestion and excretion could be a very challenging topic within the life of this native as a result of having the Jupiter in this particular state in the second house with the specific afflictions that it has. It could create an internal physiological environment in which it's feeling as if food is the enemy in a particular sense. Now, when we take into consideration the fact that this Jupiter is also ruling the fourth house, then that creates certain challenges in terms of the paternal story. And it could be an indication that the father probably did not have the sort of resources that he needed in order to show up within the life of the native in a very robust way. And so the father could have been a potential point of major contention or challenge, or the father having a life that really took care of him could have been a very real challenge within his own life. And so he probably didn't have the means to show up as a very robust paternal figure within the life of the native. Now, once again, this would be augmented based on us seeing other things going on with this particular Jupiter in this particular chart. However, that would be my internal assessment of that even without seeing the chart. Because the rule of the first house is also the rule of the fourth house, we might also say to the native that she looks a lot like her father, she carries a lot of her father's mannerisms, and in a very real sense, she feels and finds herself re-manifesting or replicating a lot of her own father's karmic stories in this lifetime, and those karmic stories may be directly impacting her within the specific realm of her relationship to money, but they could also be impacting her within the specific realities of her physical body because the ruler of the first house is going to represent your physical body within this lifetime just as much as the first house is going to represent your physical body within this lifetime. And if my physical body is ruled by the same planet that rules my father and it's in the sort of condition that it's in, then that might possibly be an indication that a lot of my hereditary afflictions within this lifetime probably come to me through the lineage of my father. And so I might be manifesting a lot of my own father's health story. And when we think about things that tend to be hereditary as far as health, especially as far as gut health is concerned, there can be a whole spectrum of things. You know, sometimes there can be a thread of diabetes that runs through a person's family, and that becomes something that we see not necessarily being passed down generationally, but that can be something that we see repeated generationally. Or potentially there's a particular food sensitivity with someone and that food sensitivity becomes something that another person inherits. So there's this whole notion of what do I get from my family and what do I get from my father specifically that ends up being a major challenge within how I organize myself physically within this world. But organizing myself physically within the world also has to do with how I feed myself, but it also has to do with how I nurture myself from a financial perspective. So that would be my specific concept or idea and some of my specific concepts and ideas regarding this, even without seeing the chart of this person, and once again, I want to acknowledge that this is not necessarily the wisest way to practice astrology because the only way to practice astrology with wisdom is to be able to see the chart in its entirety and to be able to speak on what we're seeing so that we can give a person their most comprehensive understanding of themselves possible from an astrological perspective. That makes sense. And yeah, of course, you're, you're right because... A lot of what you're saying resonated, but there are some things that are better than you would think. And it's because I think supportive aspects and all of that. So definitely, yes, I very much look like my father. 
Um, I um, don't have food sensitivities, but I was a very, very picky eater as a child. Um, we did have, um, it wasn't my father wasn't supportive, but we did have, you know, financial issues that he really like had to strive to overcome and, and he did, but definitely, you know, went through financial struggles as a child. And I definitely had to learn to, um, manage my money and, and like not, not be, not, not that I wasn't very stupid. I just like, I was very oblivious to money I, and I still am. But um, I'm, I'm just not a person who wants to think about money. Like, it, you know what I mean? It's, it bothers me to have to think about but I know I have to. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, definitely constitutionally, you know, I'm, I'm 68 in the body of like a 40 year old. Um, and I also think um, it's very close to Neptune. So it's like within four degrees of Neptune, even though it's not in the same sign. Um, so I definitely have um, not, I, well, the hereditary part is true. I uh, have uh, autoimmune arthritis and it comes from my father's side. Well, from both sides, but more, my father's mother's more affected. Um, so rheumatoid arthritis, I've had a lot of allergies, like severe allergies, even anaphylactic reactions to medicines. So I think maybe that's that Neptune also coming in. And um, I'm just, I'm always tired. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if that's a retrograde or Neptune or both, but yes. Hey there, everyone. I just want to say thank you all so much for the love and support that you've shown me in the months after the publication of my book, Mastering Traditional Astrology. If you have loved reading MTA and if it has deepened your astrological relationship and practice in any way whatsoever, then please leave a five-star review for us over on Amazon.com. As a self-published author, this would mean the world to me because the more five-star high-quality reviews we get, the more Amazon promotes the book to a wider audience so that more and more people can experience the magic that is mastering traditional astrology. Thank you so much for your continued love and support, and thank you so much for your dedication to this extraordinary field of astrology.